Biotin, also known as vitamin B7, is essential for a multitude of bodily functions. It is found naturally in lots of foods like eggs, fish, and seeds. The daily recommended intake for biotin is 35 to 70 micrograms per day, and a healthy balanced diet would meet those requirements. It can also be found in a multitude of multivitamins, prenatal, and daily vitamins. Biotin consumption and usage has exploded in the past six years. With an estimated increase of almost 260% since 2013, the popularity of biotin in beauty regimens is booming. Since being promoted as having tremendous effects on hair and nail growth and generating glowing skin, today, almost one in three American adults are taking some sort of supplement or vitamin that contains biotin. While the daily dosage is 30 to 40 micrograms, people are known to take mega doses of supplements ranging between 2,000 and 10,000 micrograms. In some cases, that is almost 650 times the recommended daily intake. But what most people don't know is that they need to declare this information to their physician when asked what medications they are taking. Biotin information is crucial in order for their blood tests to be run effectively. Patients are unaware that they should communicate their biotin consumption and are not likely to comply with the suggestion to refrain from taking biotin for several days. This leads to a cycle of biotin interference that results in improper treatment. Elevated biotin levels in a blood sample as a result of supplement intake can interfere with a test function and lead to a falsely high or falsely lowered test result. This is due to the fact that not all lab tests are designed the same. The basic architecture of some tests makes them vulnerable to biotin interference because biotin is used as a part of the building blocks of the test or assay. This is why when any introduced biotin from commonly used supplements is present in a patient's blood sample, that biotin would mimic the assay's inherent biotin and block the biotin-based mechanism from working as intended. This in turn would cause interference with the measurement of the analyte that is being assayed. The bottom line is, you can't trust the results. The effect of biotin interference on clinical tests has always been known. However, awareness was heightened in November 2017 when the FDA issued a warning to clinicians and lab personnel to be on the lookout for biotin interference and to ask patients about their biotin intake prior to withdrawing blood. This warning was issued after a biotin-based laboratory test returned results of falsely low troponin, a test used to predict heart attacks. In this case, biotin interference stopped the patient from receiving necessary care, and the patient died. Numerous publications expose the breadth of the biotin interference in clinical assays and has been shown to affect a multitude of tests with various thyroid assays. Parathyroid hormone, PTH assays, reproductive hormone assays, such as testosterone, progesterone, estradiol, luteinizing hormone, LH, and follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH assays, cancer assays such as PSA, and other assays such as vitamin D. Two of the most widely used thyroid assays, TSH and FT4, are utilized to diagnose patients correctly for hyper or hypothyroidism. When biotin interferes with these two assays, it causes the sandwich assay, TSH, to produce a falsely lowered result and competitive assay, FT4, to produce a falsely high result. In this scenario, when biotin interference occurs, you now have two false results together that create a clinical interpretation of hyperthyroidism, which is when your thyroid makes too much thyroid hormone. Can you imagine the confusion this causes for both the clinician and the patient? Diagnostic information is critical to the medical care of your patients. Laboratory errors can lead to clinical misinterpretation and potentially incorrect treatment and follow-up. Clinicians or physicians may not be fully or directly informed about the potential of biotin interference, but laboratory directors should have received warning letters from the manufacturers indicating which assays are affected by biotin. The protocol that patients are currently asked to follow to mitigate the risk of biotin interference includes declaring supplemental amounts of biotin on their medication form, then refraining from taking biotin supplements for eight hours. Patients are not likely to categorize their supplements as medication, and if they are taking biotin supplements, they will not likely know the dosage. When you take into effect that biotin is utilized in so many products and often undetected by the user, wouldn't a simpler solution be to change your tests rather than trying to change your patient's supplemental regimen? The entire line of Toso AIA Pack immunoassays are biotin-free with no risk of biotin interference. 
Designed for accuracy, TOSO immunoassays do not rely on biotinylated reactions and have always been biotin-free, providing you and your patients the convenience of not needing to return for their blood draw after halting all of their vitamins and supplements which isn't possible in emergency testing situations, such as with troponin, and because you switched to TOSO AIA pack immunoassays. But in fact, if the lab had used a biotin-free test, the diagnosis would have come back correct and shown the complete opposite result of hypothyroidism, where the thyroid gland doesn't make enough thyroid hormone. Without worry of biotin interference, patients have peace of mind knowing that you can run the tests they need for results everyone can trust. All TOSO tests are biotin-free.